I think it's interesting. There's a lot of cool stuff at ASCO that will weave into this. But I think that, um, you know, the first thing before, let's go to the pre-ASCO days. I mean, you know, I, I, let's start with Carrie. I mean, someone comes in with HER2 positive disease. You know, she's got a core biopsy. She she's HER2 three plus, you know, maybe has a, some estrogen receptor expression, maybe doesn't. You know, how do you treat her when she comes in? So usually this is in concert with our surgeon, of course, and really the, the size here of the primary tumor is one of the first things we'll look at. I think, you know, if, the, if we already know the patient has node positive disease, then I think we all feel very comfortable to move forward with neoadjuvant um, chem, uh, chemotherapy and HER2-directed therapy. But for the tumors that are less than two centimeters, particularly those that are ER positive, HER2 positive, we're very comfortable with a surgical first approach to see if we can... Um, weave in de-escalation strategies for that patient. Yeah. So the question is, let's start with that for a minute. So what is your cutoff? Is it one centimeter? Is it two centimeters? You know, that's the first question we always ever ask. So someone comes in with say, for me, for example, it's triple positive disease, right? Say T1C triple positive. There's enough out there. We can get into that in a few minutes. You know, there's enough out there that says maybe, you know, some of these people are really not her too enriched or kind of lumen lay, you know, maybe we'll just do surgery on them. You know, what do you yeah. guys do there at Duke? So I think, you know, the original APT study allowed up to three centimeters, but if you look at the, you know, the um, patient characteristics, only around 9% of those patients had a tumor between two to three centimeters. And then when they move forward with the attempt study, all of the tumors were, all of the primaries were less than two centimeters. So I really use that as my cutoff. Um, I do, however, treat a tumor that's ERPR positive, HER2 positive, in the 1.8, 1.9 uh, centimeter, um, you know, I worry more about those if they're ERP or negative HER2 positive than I do the ER positive HER2 positives. It's not to say that I would transition that patient to neoadjuvant chemotherapy. I might just consider a different chemotherapy backbone than just the 12 weeks of paclitaxel trastuzumab and might think about a HER-TC regimen in that case and give a taxotere cytoxan backbone um, to a patient who has a larger T1C um, ER negative HER2 positive node negative breast cancer. Virginia, you guys the same. What do you guys do there? Pretty similar. So, uh, you know, we've been burnt with tumors that have come in at 1.8 centimeters and then at the time of surgery, they're 0.8 centimeters. And, and, and so exposing that patient to a TCHP type regimen, I think would, would really be a little too much. So I use the two centimeter or node positive cutoff. If uh, they're less and node negative, I would give them, I will do primary surgery and then decide on post adjuvant therapy. Otherwise I will give them usually TCHP. TCHP. All right, so um, Rashmi, what are you guys doing there at, uh, at uh, uh, the years? Very similar approach. So I use the two centimeter cutoff um, to decide if, if uh, a patient goes to surgery first and then um, treat them in the adjuvant setting with, with um, ideally a de-escalation strategy. But if um, they are either, they have tumor either two centimeters or greater or node positive, then um, generally opt for TCHP in the new adjuvant setting. So let me ask you guys a question. What's the smallest one you would treat, Mark? I had a case, I think last week, a woman comes to your second opinion, she's got two millimeters. Of the, in a setting of a lot of HER2 positive DCIS, you always get this one, right? A yeah. little bit of like micromacies, two millimeters, that someone stains as HER2 three plus. What do you do? And her nose are negative. What do you do? What do you do? I'm not impressed that those need adjuvant HER2 targeted therapy at right. all. You know, my right. cutoff is about a half a centimeter, anything yeah. less, less than that, especially if they're steroid receptor positive, I'm very comfortable omitting HER2 targeted therapy altogether. Yeah. I worry about the cases that are, you know, 0 0.4 centimeters and ER negative, you know young patient perhaps. Uh, so, you know, in those cases, you have to have a balanced discussion with the patient, tell them the pros and cons of each approach, and they may have a strong preference one way or the other that can help make the decision at the end of the day. So, Reshmi, everybody, uh, Rashmi, everybody always quotes the MD Anderson paper, right, with the 13%, you know, recurrence risk in stage one disease, you know, as the reason to treat people like this, but I don't think there are that many T1A and B in there, are there? I mean, Carrie, are there a lot of that or not? No, that's, that's my understanding as well, that the large majority of, of patients, um, and, and Rashmi can chime in, uh, were more in the T1B, T1C. And I would agree, I, I do not usually offer adjuvant HER2-directed therapy for a tumor that's five millimeters or less. 
Okay. Now, there, was, thing, there, Adam, was a, the, there was a retrospective study that was presented a few years ago in San Antonio from the Netherlands, which was a, pretty much a tumor registry, so absolutely not clinical trial material. But it was interesting because some of these patients that were T1As were treated with trastuzumab-based therapy, some were not. And even in the two one A T one A's, the benefit of trastuzumab was there. So that's there. why, in, in the case that Mark presented, where it's a young 0.4 centimeter tumor, ER negative, I, you know, I I show them the graph, and the graph's pretty nice, and then they get to decide. I mean, I, I was thinking of that too when we were talking. I mean, I don't know. It's like a toughie. I mean, you know, the, the whole point is, you know, we're I think we're a little bit more nuanced than our surgical colleagues. You know, we don't like to like we like to think about what we do a little bit, but the long term side effects of what we're going to do. You know, and I, I just think that we don't jump as much as we used to. You know, it was a theme of ASCO this year, actually. You know, and I don't know. I'm, I'm really on the fence here. I really am. Guys, the I mean, thing, Adam, Adam the, the hardest thing for me are the large HER2 positive DCISs that have a little bit of microinvasion yes. in like almost every section. But yes. It's very hard to, to guesstimate what the actual volume of disease is in those cases. Uh, I find those probably the most challenging. And the worst thing is, you know, you know 60, 70% of DCISs are HER2 positive, right? So how do you know they're not staining the DCIS and just making a mistake that it's not invasive or not, you know, because you can't see the basement membrane. Yeah, it's, I don't know what to say. It's, it's, it's a real toughie.